Hey everyone, it's Sarah and today I am back with a massive haul to share with you. So I have things from Ulta, I have a couple things from Triple Traders to share with you, and I have a pretty big fragrance net haul. So I said that I wasn't going to do another haul for a while, but yeah, I didn't know at the time that I was going to be compelled to get more perfume so but anyways i'm gonna jump right in i'm gonna start with the things that i picked up from ulta and as always everything is really affordable in fact these are probably the most expensive things that i got um i did pick these all up from ulta because ulta was doing their 10 times the point sale which for me, I feel like it's the best sale of the year. It's when you can spend like $100 and get like a thousand points. Once you get up to like 2,000 points, you can get like $150 off your order. So um, their point system is amazing and the 10 times the point event is like the best event of the year. So um, usually I will pick up a whole bunch of stuff, makeup and skincare and such, but I'm going through a phase right now where nothing like none of the new makeup and skincare right now is like interesting me so I just st stuck to what I know which is perfume and I did get some good things here so the first one that I want to talk about this is my favorite thing that I probably picked up this one I was really really surprised by so this is one of those little Clinique my happy fragrances these are just little half ounce bottles they're pretty inexpensive I want to say they're like $21 um, I think they're $21. This one is called Cookies and Kisses, and of course I was intrigued immediately because um, anything that sounds like it's gonna lean gourmand, I'm usually all over it. So this one says, um, let's see here, delicious like baking on a lazy Sunday. Nibble something yummy just out of the oven, a touch of cinnamon, rich vanilla, and creamy chestnuts. This is a complete dupe of By the Fireplace from Replica. So if you love By the Fireplace from Re Replica, but do not want to spend the $120, or I think they make one ounce bottles that you can get for $80 now, but even still, for $21, you can get a really, really good smell-alike. This one is even a little bit creamier. It's got much more vanilla in it than By the Fireplace. So this one ends up smelling just like By the Fireplace with that beautiful kind of smoky, nutty chestnut base, but it's a little bit creamier. It's got more vanilla in it. So it's really, really nice. This one, so I had the cocoa, I forget what the what it was. It's in a purple bottle. It's cocoa and cashmere maybe. Um, that one performed really, really badly for me, so I ended up decluttering it. This one though, I did test, I haven't given this a full wear test because it's a little too warm out for this yet, but I did give it a good test just all the way up and down like my arm and even in the heat, this thing was a beast. It lasted forever. I was really, really pleasantly surprised. So yeah, I am super looking forward to fall for this one. Um, if you like by the fireplace, but you want something a little, like just a touch creamier, a little bit sweeter, more vanilla, this is for you. It's a beauty. So that is the first thing I picked up. That is Clinique My Happy Cookies and Kisses, which I think the name is a little bit misleading. It's definitely not like a cookie scent. It's definitely a kind of slightly smoky, woody, nutty, sweet scent. Okay, and then I picked up another one of these My Happy fragrances. This is the Clinique My Happy Baby Bouquet. This one was not as successful for me. Um, this one says, blissful, like a sleeping baby, embrace the tenderness of a favorite lullaby, bright mandarin, a tender heart of orange flower petals, and creamy musk, which I thought sounded really promising. I do love the bottle. I love the light pink. This one, it's not horrible, and I do kind of like it. It's, this one is a very bright, fresh, almost sharp smelling floral. I'm getting like a lily of the valley in this. Um, I will of course have the notes on the screen for you. I haven't looked up the notes. Just going by what I am smelling. I smell the orange flower is definitely there. I think that's where the sharpness is coming from. I think I smell lily of the valley and it's giving it a little bit of sweetness, but I think the orange flower is causing, is making it smell like the whole fragrance smell pretty sharp. And then when it gets on your skin, because it's got that sharpness, it almost goes 
Um, it almost goes cleaning product because it's got that kind of chemically sharpness. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but that's it ends up on my skin. It ended up kind of veering into the cleaning product um, territory. But it is a really pretty bright, fresh, kind of spring-like floral. I wouldn't call, I wouldn't say this reminds me of like a baby or anything. So baby bouquet is, mm, I don't know. I don't think that these are named well. But yeah, it's, it's a pretty bright, fresh floral. I'm pretty sure it's got some Lily of the Valley in it. It just is not, I don't know, the Lily of the Valley blended with the orange flower is just not meshing super well. So yeah, that is Clinique, my happy baby bouquet. I was not, I wasn't crazy about that one. Okay, next I picked up this one here. This is Mon Paris Eau de Toilette Lumiere. And I don't know what possessed me to pick this up because I'm not, I like Mon Paris. I think it's just fine. I've got the dossier dupe of it. And um, yeah, it's fine. It's not anything that I reach for a ton just because it's not my favorite fragrance in the world. But yeah, this one is the Lumiere version. And it basically is just like a lighter version of Mon Paris, which, yeah, this one is really bright. This one smells, this one has some really, really bright citruses in the top, so it smells really, really bright. When it dries down or when it gets to the deep dry down, it definitely starts to smell more like the original Mon Paris. It's definitely got the original Mon Paris DNA. But yeah, you basically just get like a really sharp blast of citrus in the top of this one. And then you almost get something like a fruit that feels like lychee, something really bright, uh, crisp smelling. And then you get, it dries down to the kind of usual florals and light patchouli. So it's nice. I love this. This is one of the best little travel sprays that I've got. I think that is, it's so stinking pretty. Like, look how pretty that is. It's nothing but like a little, you know, thing, a little elastic on this travel spray, but golly, is it so cute. So yeah, this one, I mean, I'm perfectly happy with it. I'll, I'll wear it like in the, you know, probably more in the spring. And then last but not least from Ulta, I picked up this one here. This is Marc Jacobs Perfect Intense. And this one's okay. Um, again, I have the dossier dupe of Marc Jacobs Perfect, which is fine. It's really nice. It's actually a really, really good dupe. This is nice. It really is just like a much more intense version of Perfect. This one smells syrupy. It smells thick. I feel like the peach is really amped up in this and I'm not a huge fan of peach, but I feel like there's some amped up peach in this. It's like a, a really sweet, thick, syrupy version of Perfect. It's nice. I wore this and I layered it with something out. Well, I'll tell you what I layered it with and it ended up being really, really beautiful. Yeah, I probably won't. I probably won't hang on to this. I'll probably end up passing it along. Um, just because it's nice, but I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I think I was thinking it might have been a little bit different than Perfect, and it's really not. It smells just like Perfect, but again, just a much more intense version. I'm not the biggest fan of Perfect, so it's okay. It's really nice. I think those of you out there that are lovers of Marc, J Marc Jacobs Perfect will absolutely love this. It's really, really nice for what it is. So anyways, that is Marc Jacobs Perfect Intense. Okay, let's talk about the things that Triple Trader sent over. So Triple Traders just surprised me and sent over a couple of oils and oh my goodness, you guys, are these amazing. So the first one that they sent is this one called Rui, R-O-O-H-I. This is from a brand called Yasmin and it is a concentrated perfume oil. See if I can show you the packaging here. So that is what the packaging looks like. And then you open the little box and then there's your little oil. And how darn cute is that oil? I always love the packaging of these Middle Eastern fragrances and oils. It's got a little rhinestone on the top. It's just so pretty. So this one is, this one is a rose and oud combination. 
and this one when you first put it on it's really really sweet and vanilla heavy it's very smooth it's very soft it's creamy you get a touch of the rose but it's mostly just about this really beautiful soft sweet fluffy vanilla but then as it dries down as it gets into the deep dry down you start getting this intense rose and it ends up drying down to smell a lot like uh, shag half oud from swiss arabian so in fact i think that that's what i'll end up doing is uh, putting on the oil and then layering shag half oud over it not that either of these need any help this is an absolute beast on its own you do not need it doesn't need any help shag half oud is an absolute beast on its own it definitely doesn't need any help but i just feel like layered they're going to be stunning and this little tiny oil packs a punch. You only need a little tiny bit, so it's got like a stopper in here, and you just pull it out. The little, um, the little rod thing is glass, so, oh gosh, it's stunning. It's so beautiful, just because it's so, it's so vanilla heavy, and it stays so vanilla heavy for such a long time. It's gorgeous. And then as time kind of goes on, you start to get that really beautiful kind of spice, rich, deep rose. And then it ends up smelling like Shaka Oud or Oud Bouquet, whichever you prefer. Mm, it's a good one. So anyways, that is from a brand called Yasmine, and it's called R-O-O-H-I, or Rui, and yeah, it's a great affordable little oil. You can pick these up on uh, Triple Traders, and I think they're like $17.99 for the oil, which will last you a very long time because you will only need a few dots of it here and there. So there's that one, and then the second one, which was my absolute favorite. This one is called Habibi, which I think means love, if I remember correctly. Um, you, I'm sure somebody out there will know what Habibi means, but I think it means love. Um, but anyways, this is another one, and I absolutely adored the packaging of this one. It's so cute with the little stars on it. Oh, so beautiful. So, so stunning. So this one is, this one reminds me of like apricot and vanilla. This one has a roller ball. Oh gosh. This one is so stunning. It, this one is very, very vanilla heavy. And when this one dries down, it dries down to the creamiest, fluffiest, sweet vanilla and it actually hangs around. This one, I wore this to bed last night. This is what I uh, layered Marc Jacobs Perfect Intense over. This hung around, Perfect Intense wore off after a couple of hours. Um, this hung around though, and I could still smell this on me, on my clothing when I woke up this morning. So, so it's an absolute beast. So this is vanillic, it's a little bit powdery, it's a little bit floral smelling. It's got some fruits in it. It's got a tiny bit of coconut in it as well, but not enough that you can even really tell that it's got coconut in it. They don't have the notes for these listed and I can't really find them anywhere, so I can't tell you exactly what's in them. Just kind of what they, you know, what they smell like. But this one I can tell you is amazing. They're so good. I think this one is actually $17.99 and I think the Ruhi is $19.99. Either way, they're both super, super affordable. So thank you so much to Triple Traders for sending over these beautiful little gems of oils. Um, yeah, I will have them linked down below. So if you guys are interested, you can check them out. Not affiliated, they just sent them over. Um, those are those amazing oils. Okay, and then before we get into the big fragrance net haul, I ordered four oils from Kumba Made. They just recently, I think they had like an anniversary sale and they did 25% off everything, which is usually when I try to order from Kumba Made when they're having a good sale. Um, and there were some oils I wanted to pick up, so I went ahead and grabbed them. So the first one I got is this one here. This is called Black Coconut. This one, um, this one is coconut and sandalwood, and those are the two notes that I remember it having. It's kind of like a dark, it's like a dark coconut, but it still smells like, you know, coconut. It's got a little bit more body to it. 
but it is a coconut at the end of the day. I love it. It's really good. This one lasted a really long time. I did test these um, just kind of on my on my arms and my hands, so I haven't given them a full wear test. Of course, as I do, you will see them in a What I Wore Last Week video, and I will update you totally with them. These four that I got, they were they lasted really, really well. So that is the first one I got. It's called Black Coconut. Next, I got this one here called Creamy Coconut. These are both ones that I have been dying to get my hands on. And this one is stunning. This doesn't have the sandalwood in it. It's not, it's not like a dark smelling coconut the way that the black coconut is. This one is more of a vanilla coconut. It is a creamy coconut. It's pretty straightforward. Um, there's not a lot going on with this one. It is just kind of a creamy vanilla coconut. I love it. This was my favorite one out of everything that I ordered and I'm super excited. I've been on a coconut kick lately, I think because it's getting towards the end of the summer and so I'm going to get all of the coconut out of my system before we go into fall and I kind of put all my coconut up for the season. So yeah, that is creamy coconut. Next I got this. Holy crap, you guys. I had no idea. This is amber paste and this is an actual paste. It's sticky, resinous paste. I don't know if my camera will probably not focus on it. Yeah, it's a thick, sticky, resinous paste. Oh gosh, it smells amazing. It's really, really heavy and vanillic and resinous, pasty. I mean, it smells, smells thick. It goes on your skin like a paste, it's an oil. You have to really work it into your skin. I think it's going to make an amazing base for all of my heavy uh, fall and winter amber fragrances. So I'm really, really excited about that one. So that is Amber Paste. It's really sweet and it's a pretty vanilla heavy amber, which is my favorite. Okay, and then last but not least, I saved my least favorite for last. This one is Honeysuckle Rose and this one I thought for sure I was going to love, but this one is almost too sweet for me, and I think it's because it's a sweet floral that is the reason it's too sweet. It is a really, really sweet floral. It's rose heavy too, so it's this really kind of sickly sweet, traditional smelling rose. And I get the honeysuckle too. I will tell you, I did test this one on my skin, and I hated it until the deep dry down, but the deep dry down was beautiful and was magic. So I feel like with this one, if I, I don't know, I'm gonna have to give this one a really good wear test, put it all over and just deal with it until it gets to the deep dry down because it is stunning in the deep dry down. So anyways, that is Honeysuckle Rose, and those are the four oils that I picked up from Kuma Made. Let's get into this baby. So this is a huge fragrance net order. So this came about because I got an email. They were, they always send out these emails like 80% off, unboxed and testers. Usually I don't look at those emails, but for whatever reason I did, and I just started kind of going through the different pages, and they had a ton of um, fragrances that I hadn't heard of before, number one, or that have been on my wish list, and you know, I just have wanted them, so I went ahead and picked them up. Okay, so I'm gonna start with an absolute winner. This one is called Chantilly Eau de Vie, so this is kind of like a flanker of the old school Chantilly fragrance, which I have not smelled that fragrance for absolute years. I have no idea what that one even smells like anymore. But yeah, this is beautiful. I actually first saw this on one of the Canadian websites, I think fragranceby.ca, and that's when it like at first piqued my interest. And I never really forgot about it. And so I when I saw it on Fragrance and I just went ahead and grabbed it. So um, these ones, I'm gonna go ahead and read the notes. I'll have the notes on the screen for you as well, but because I'm not super familiar with them, I'm gonna read the notes out to you as well. This is so good. So I've got the ru I've got this ruhi oil. It got all over my fingers. So, and it's so so strong. I'm gonna have a hard time smelling anything else. 
this is beautiful this is there's nothing groundbreaking about this at all it's kind of like a it's a clean sweet kind of slightly generic smelling floral it's kind of a shampooy fragrance it's in the same it's kind of like along the line of Justin Bieber the key or the pitbull of perfume it's that kind of a fragrance the magic with this one though happens on the skin um, this one when I sprayed it on the paper I thought it smelled beautiful but it wasn't until I actually sprayed it on my skin that I fell in love. So Chantilly Eau de Vie is Pear, Cassis, Frangipani, Jasmine Samba, Gardenia, Amber, Madagascar Vanilla, and Sandalwood. And I'm such a sucker for Pear. I love Cassis. I of course love Madagascar Vanilla. I love Jasmine. It's just, a, it's a good one. It's a really, really good one. And it is super, super affordable. I forget how much this was, but it was really affordable. It's just a really good one. So anyways, that is Chantilly Eau de Vie. That is the first one, beautiful. Okay, this next one, this is one that I had never even, I think maybe it had been recommended to me at one point, maybe a long time ago. Um, I think somebody even told me what this was a smell like for, and it just, it didn't come, I like had completely forgotten about it until I just ordered it randomly. I ordered this one because I looked up the notes and I thought it smelled beautiful. This is a fragrance from Sean John called Empress. Now, admittedly, I am not the biggest fan of Puff Daddy, P Diddy, whatever his name is, whatever he's going by these days, um, but this perfume is beautiful. So anyways, this is the fragrance. Again, it is called Empress. And this is an absolute smell alike for DKNY women, but with a completely different set of notes, which is crazy. So DKNY women is tomato leaf and grapefruit. I say grapefruit every, every single time. I don't think it's actually got grapefruit in it. I think it's just tomato leaf and citruses. Um, Empress, this is not. This is, um, this is totally different. So Empress is Key Lime Pie Accord, Mandarin, Starfruit, Cranberry, Raspberry, Peony, Passionflower, Cardamom, Ambrette Seed, Vanilla, Sandalwood, Crystallized Caramel, and Second Skin Accord. I sprayed this on you guys and I was in love. It was love at first sniff. For me, I love this. I don't feel like it smells like any of the things that it's got listed as notes. To me, this smells like DKNY women. It smells fresh. It's such a good one. If you like DKNY women, I think you would really like this. If you don't, I would definitely stay away from it because that's exactly what it smells like. Um, I've got DKNY women. I am gonna test them side by side and we'll see if they actually are, if this actually is a dupe for it. I'm quite sure it is. It smells exactly like it. It's so good. So what a little gem that is. So anyways, that is Sean John Empress. Okay, this next one, this is one that I have had in and out of my cart a million times. It's one that I've had my eye on for a couple of years now, um, but have just never bought it because I've got so many rose fragrances in my collection and I felt like uh, it's just gonna be a kind of light generic rose. I've got, you know, and I've got fragrances like that. I don't need it but I just gave in because it was like $5. It was so inexpensive. This is Taboo Rose, and this is beautiful. I don't, I have things that smell similar, but I don't have anything that smells quite like this. This has got, it's one of those kind of lychee rose combinations. So yeah, it definitely is, definitely is quite a light, kind of slightly fruity, you know, a little bit generic smelling rose, but it's beautiful. And especially for the price. It's one that I don't think it's probably gonna last very long. I haven't given this one a good test, but I did test it just on my, like on my arm. And I got, you know, maybe 30 minutes out of it before it just completely disappeared. So I feel like this one's going to perform like a body spray, which is fine for $5, it's fine. Oh, it's so nice though. So, uh, Taboo Rose is lychee, rose, cedar, and amber. So, again, it's kind of one of those clean, sweet, 
really, really modern smelling roses, but I really enjoy it. I think it's gonna be great. Um, it's one of those just great fragrances to throw on when you get out of the shower. You're just, you want something super casual. You just wanna smell clean and good and not necessarily perfumey. Um, it's gonna be great for that. So that is Taboo Rose. Okay, this next one, I'm wearing it today. This one just does not perform well at all. Um, I am a big fan of Giles Cantuel fragrances, the ones that I've smelled. I've got the Giles Cantuel Vanilla Perfume, which is a, um, it's pretty much a dupe for Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille. Um, this is a fragrance from Giles Cantuel called Arsenal. It's called Arsenal Women. I like this one. I love the bottle. I love the really rich colored liquid, but I also love the gems in the bottom of the fragrance. I just think that it's really pretty and I like, I don't know that you'll be able to see it. On camera, I don't know if you can see where it says Arsenal across the front and yeah, it's just a nice little perfume. It's sweet. This is what I'm wearing today. Oh, yeah, this is what I'm wearing today. Oh, it's so nice. It's like sweet berries and caramel. That's what I get from it, like sweet berries and caramel. Okay, so Giles Cantuel is, sorry, Giles Cantuel Arsenal Woman is lychee, peach, freesia, orange, melon, jasmine, lily, heliotrope, orange blossom, magnolia, caramel, vanilla, sandalwood, patchouli, musk, vetiver, and moss. And that's what I really, really love about this one is it's sweet, but it's not overly sweet. That vetiver and the moss in the base really, really grounds it. And it's there throughout. Now, when you very first spray it on, you get a lot of the caramel. The caramel is the most prominent note. It's this beautiful, sweet, but still pretty light caramel. But then in the dry down, you really start to get this beautiful vetiver and moss and it really, really grounds it. It's just a really nice fragrance. I think this one gets compared to La Via Belle from Lancome. I don't get La Via Belle at all from this. Yeah, in fact, I wouldn't know what to compare this to. I don't, it's definitely not the most unique fragrance on the market by any means. It definitely smells like other things but I can't really pinpoint what it smells like. The base notes in this one are what really give it some uniqueness and I love it. And I don't get, I'm not a huge fan of peach and fragrance and I'm really not getting a lot of the peach. I really just get the berries and the caramel and you know what it reminds me a little bit of? It reminds me a little bit of Pascal Morabito Purple Ruby. Um, and that fragrance used to get compared to La Nuit Tresor, which I never felt like it was really a dupe for La Nuit Tresor. They're definitely in the same kind of family, but that's what this reminds me of. It reminds me of Pascal Morabito, Purple Ruby, but Purple Ruby didn't have that beautiful vetiver and moss in the base. But yeah, this one to me is like berries and caramel and the vetiver and moss. It's gorgeous. I really, really like it. I don't get a ton of florals out of it. It's pretty light, it wears pretty close to the skin. Um, this one has almost zero projection, to be honest. It doesn't project a lot, but you will smell it. And it's just really, really nice. Now it is hot as fire here in the South, so this is not a good time to be testing fragrances like this. So take everything that I say about fragrances that I'm testing in this heat with a grain of salt as far as performance goes because even I am not you know making my mind up about how fragrances like the new ones that are coming into my life like even I'm not making up my mind about how they perform almost everything I've got to test in cooler weather um, and as I do I will definitely update you guys in like a what I wore last week video because this is just not the heat, the, this is not the weather for fragrances like this. This is a fall winter fragrance and I think it's going to be incredible in cooler weather. So anyways, that is Giles Cantuel Arsenal Women. This was such a 
Good little find. This is a tester bottle, I believe. Yeah, I'm quite sure this is a tester bottle. It doesn't have, have a lid or anything, so there's that one. Okay, this next one, this is one that I will immediately be passing on because this is a fragrance, this is a dupe of a fragrance that I do not like. But boy, is this a stunning bottle, and I was so sad that it, it was a dupe for what it was a dupe for. So this is a fragrance from Women's Secret, which is such an underrated little gem, cheapy house. They make some really, really amazing fragrances. This is a fragrance called Intimate. It is an eau de parfum formulation, and I love this bottle. I think it's really, really pretty. I love the pink. It's just such a pretty feminine pink bottle. I like the little um, design on the back. It's just a beautiful, oh, it does have some stuff floating in it. This, unfortunately, is a dupe for Carolina Herrera, Good Girl. And I hate Good Girl. Yeah, it's a much nicer version. I will tell you that. This is way more tolerable than the original Good Girl because it's a little bit lighter and brighter. I am getting more citrus in the top of this. And yeah, I definitely am getting some rose. I can smell rose distinctly in it. And it is really, really pretty. It's much fresher and much better smelling to me than Carolina Herrera Good Girl. In fact, I was like, oh, I kind of like this. It's gonna be super nice. And I even contemplated keeping it, but then I was like, no, you don't like Good Girl. Quit trying, <laughs> quit trying. You don't enjoy it, and I don't. I don't because I know that I'm gonna spray this on and the beautiful bright citrus and flowers are gonna be there for 15 minutes and then it's gonna dry down to smell exactly like Good Girl, which I really, really do not like. So yeah, that is Women's Secret. It's called Intimate. It's a beautiful big bottle. This is a, yeah, a 3.4 ounce bottle. Really, really affordable, gorgeous fragrance, but just, yeah. And if you like, Carolina Herrera good girl. I think you will love this if you're like me and don't like it Then you will not like this. That one was definitely a sad little fail, but I'm glad to know You know that there's a good dupe for it out there. So that one is gonna go into the Going away pile. Okay, this next one this next one's super interesting I don't know if I like this one or not yet. I need to test this on my skin. This is definitely an older style fragrance I think it came out in 2002 this is from a house called Jean Louise Scherer, and it's called Immense Pour Femme. This is another one that I I purchased just strictly based off the notes. I do think that the bottle is really neat looking. It looks like a I don't know. It looks like a skyscraper or something. Um, it's a really cool little bottle. Now, let me see. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this on my hand. I haven't even sprayed this on my skin at all. This is a super interesting fragrance. It's very vintage smelling, very vintage smelling. This, I think I'm in love with it. I think it gets, I was reading through reviews on Fragrantica and I can't, there were some really, really good reviews from people on there that, you know, that have a really like deep appreciation for vintage style fragrances, so they really loved it. And when I sprayed this just on the paper, I wasn't super impressed because I wasn't getting any of the depth out of it. But golly, on, sprayed on skin, it smells beautiful. Yeah, I wanna see this one came out in like 2002, maybe. Um, so this one is, Sorry, I have to look way over here. Mandarin orange, bergamot, orchid, heliotrope, gardenia, jasmine, patchouli, sandalwood, and vanilla. I definitely get the citruses in the top. I don't get much of the floral at all. I'm not really getting jasmine. I'm not really getting the gardenia. On my skin anyways, I'm getting, I'm definitely getting the heliotrope. And it's not a sweet heliotrope. It's like a, just the green because if you've ever smelled just plain heliotrope that's not mixed with anything sweet, it's quite a green, like a green powdery fragrance and that's what I'm getting like in the heart of this. So it's like citruses in the top and then this green kind of powdery, no frills heliotrope. I'm definitely getting a warm sandalwood and the sweet vanilla in the base. This is beautiful. This is such a little gem that I found. If you like vintage style fragrances, I think you would really, really like this. Um, 
Even if you don't love vintage style, but you love something really warm and something that's gonna dry down to just smell really warm and kind of slightly sweet, I think you would like it. Um, definitely has an older style to it. Ooh, but I love it and I'm gonna love it in the winter. I am super excited I found this little gem. I think it's stunning. This one is definitely staying in my collection. <laughs> this one's not going anywhere. So anyways, that is Immense Pour Femme from Sharer. I had never heard of that house before. Or maybe I have, I just don't know it, I don't know. Okay, next we have another Women's Secret. So I picked up three different ones from Women's Secret just because um, I love the little house. I think it's great. And yeah, so this one is Women's Secret and it is called Rose Seduction. Um, I do wish that I would have, have read the notes on this one before I picked it up. So this one is a dupe of Livia Bell. Um, it's a good dupe of Livia Bell. It's super nice, but I'm not a huge fan of Livia Bell. Oh, it's got such a nice sprayer on it. These fragrances have such nice sprayers on them. And it's funny because I didn't think that this was a dupe of Livia Bell at first, because at first it doesn't smell like it. At first you get a lot of orange blossom and it smells like orange blossom and caramel, really, when you first spray this. It's beautiful. I love, I wish you could see, it's got sparkles in the liquid. Um, and I noticed on the little blotter that I had used when I was going through smelling all of these and testing them, um, I noticed that there was a whole bunch of like really pretty fine, like micro fine sparkle. Okay, Rose Seduction is tangerine, orange blossom, apple, sweet notes, jasmine, vanilla, and musk. This one also gets compared to Hugo Boss Deep Red, which I felt like it definitely does smell like deep red. But it smells, I don't know, I'm gonna have to give this a good wear test to see if it ends up smelling like Livia Bell on me. I want this to work because I love these fragrances so much. And this one, it smells, it doesn't smell like La Via Belle until the deep, deep dry down. I swear, I just get like the orange blossom and the apple and the vanilla. So yeah, there's that one. I'm gonna hold on to this one and I am gonna give it a really good wear test to see um, if I like it because I do get the, the Boss Deep Red and I love Boss Deep Red. I just hated the Deep Red performed so badly on me. So I'm hoping that this one, we're gonna see. So anyways, that is Women's Secret. It is called Rose Seduction, and I don't know if I can if I can convey the sparkly liquid. Oh, I think you can kind of see it. It's just not focused. There, can you see the sparkles in the liquid? It's so pretty. Yeah, it's super pretty. I just love these perfumes. I think they're they're just great little perfumes. And then the last Women's Secret perfume that I got is this one here. This is the Women's Secret Apple Temptation. I really, really wish I could get my hands on the coconut one. Actually, this entire line. I wish I could get my hands on the entire line of these Temptation fragrances. This one is super, super interesting. It's so interesting. I can tell you the main note in this is cucumber. It's so... It's such a cucumber heavy fragrance, it's crazy. So, okay, so um, Apple Temptation is apple, cucumber, melon, black currant, rose, lily of the valley, and sandalwood. I think it's supposed to be a dupe for DKNY Be Delicious, but it misses the mark because there's too much cucumber in it. I mean, it does smell like it, but there's just too much cucumber in it for it to be a true dupe. But I do like it. Um, I'm gonna have to give this one a really good wear test. This is one I haven't tested at all on my skin. But yeah, I can tell you that the most prominent note in this is cucumber. And I guess it's just gonna depend on what this, how this does on skin. I love Be Delicious though. But yeah, Be Delicious doesn't have like a really strong cucumber note to me. So anyways, that is Women's Secret Apple Temptation. Okay, this next one, you guys, I was so, so surprised by this perfume. Um, 
This is a really, really inexpensive perfume by Chloe and Lamar and it is called Unbreakable Love. Um, it's, which is super awkward since they're divorced. <laughs> since they're not even together anymore, it's like really awkward. Okay, I will tell you guys though, this thing smells so much more expensive than it is. It smells exactly like something that I've smelled before and it's always that situation where I just cannot put my finger on it because actually, you know what it smells a little bit like? It smells a little bit like, not just a little bit, it smells a lot like my Aurora Poor Charles Wong Linderhof Am Morrigan. It smells very, very much like that fragrance, which is an expensive niche fragrance. So yeah, it smells so much more expensive than it is and if you read if you read reviews on this, so many other people say the same thing. This is really, really unisex, but it leans just a tad feminine. It's really, really bright and citrusy. There's something really creamy in it, and it's got this gorgeous spiced like cardamom note in the base. It's just so good. That's what it reminds me of. It took me a second because it's such that's such a an obscure little fragrance, the Linderhof M. Morgan. But that's what this reminds me of. So, and I, th I don't think Linderhof and Morgan is available right now. So if you want something that you're gonna get the same kind of experience from, this little baby right here, I think this was, I can't even tell you, this was under $10 though, I do know that. Oh my gosh, it is so, so good. It's so much better than I was expecting it to be. Unbreakable Love is bergamot, neroli, tonka bean, lily of the valley, cardamom, musk, and cedar. I have a mini of Mugler cologne. I think I still do have it. So many people compare this or say that this smells exactly like Mugler cologne. Um, when I get to my minis, like when I'm able to get my minis and get them out of storage, I will compare it and I will let you know, but so many people said that it smells like that. I think it probably does. It's been a long time since I've smelled Mugler cologne and I can't, I don't know. I, I, I don't feel confident saying yes. That's exactly what it smells like, but it's good. It's good, you guys. It's such a good one. So that is Unbreakable Love by Chloe and Lamar. Such a good one. Okay, and then last but not least, I picked up this one. This is Kim Kardashian. Uh, Fleur Fatale. I don't know how I feel about this one yet. Um, it's, I have not tried this one on my skin, so I, so yeah, I definitely can't comment on it yet. I will tell you, I adore this bottle. I think this bottle is beautiful. It's like a white rose. It's so, so pretty. And the, the fragrance is pretty. It's like a clean, it's like a clean, light, fresh rose. It's got a pepperiness to it. It's kind of like light and peppery. Um, Kim Kardashian Fleur Fatale is bergamot, blackcurrant, violet, tea rose, peony, iris, white musk, sandalwood, and amber. It's nice. It's really, really light though and I almost feel like I go anosmic to it after it starts to dry down. So I'm just gonna need to try this one on my skin. I have not tested this on my skin yet. I'm just gonna have to see. Gosh, I do love this arsenal from Giles Cantuel. This is a good one. Oh, the immense is so good when it dries down. It's so nice. So yeah, I've got some I've got some gems here. I feel like I found some underrated gems. This Chloe and Lamar fragrance is so good. Um, but yeah, guys, so that is a huge haul. I'm done for a while, definitely after this. I am done for a while. I have so many fragrances to wear and to test and to figure out if I need to keep them or not. Um, so yeah, I've got like a lot of work ahead of me and I will of course keep you guys updated in a what I wore last week video each time, you know, I wear these and test them. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you in my next one. Bye.